Hey, welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna talk about Aiden Hutchinson, uh, edge guy, University of Michigan, considered one of the top prospects in the draft. Uh, got a couple games we're gonna go through real quick, and um, let's kind of see what Aiden has. Roll the intro. All right, we back. And before we get into the film, um, a few housekeeping, thing, housekeeping things to take care of. If this is your first time here, please hit the like button if you like the content. And if you want to be notified when all these random videos come out, subscribe, hit the notification so you can be part of the notification game. And um, draft season is here. The combines later this week. So we, we finna ramp it up. Finna ramp it up around here. But to Aiden Hudson, 6'6", uh, 265, extreme athlete. Um a lot better than I thought he was on film. And I'm going to, you know, probably on Twitter you see me kind of hate on Hutchison and, you know, talk about how he was, you know, disappeared during the Georgia game and stuff like that. But when I went back and watched more than the Georgia game, my hate was just random uh, hate for no reason. I, I could have been at the player haters ball for hating on Hutchison. This, this kid's pretty damn good. <laughs> but <laughs> let's get into the film. <laughs> All right, first play against UGA. And we're just really just going to show you his athleticism. Let's see where he is. Hutches, he's here. And keep in mind, this dude, this tight end for UGA is like 6'8", uh, 260, 270, something. That's, that's a big fella. The tight end is bigger than Hutches. Watch what he does with him to him. Get your lit ass out of the way. <laughs> like a rag doll. Watch how quick he get his hands on him and then get rid of him. On him already. Hands inside. Now always talk about the ins the, the hands inside. Hutch got his hands inside. Now watch he going to press him out and then get rid of him. He's going to press him out and get rid of him. All right. Got him pressed right there. Looking in the back for you. You're in my way. Let me go see if I can get this tackle. And even though he he has no bearing on this play, that's pretty darn impressive to do that to, to this guy. Pretty darn impressive. All right, on this play, I just want to show you his athleticism, how he's able to, and this is Jamari Slayer, a pretty good uh, offensive line pro prospect in his own right. But just his ability to avoid these guys that don't have the great feet, the greatest feet. Now Slayer's a, a played um tackle for Georgia, but I think he has a all pro career in at one of these positions right here, right guard or left guard. But he was I think their best lineman, so he's the left tackle here. But watch this athleticism by by Hutchins. And the thing you don't see is now if I let me take it on back so you can see it. Watch him stay on his feet. Right here. Watch him stay on his feet after this attempt to cut block. When I tell you he's way more athletic than I thought he was. And that's that's something simple. There's no highlight. That's just something that stood out to me that will go into these other clips that we're about to see. Because keep in mind, he, he didn't have a lot of numbers against UGA. And I'm glad I thought about this before I went on. It looked like UGA basically evaporated him or he was not a factor. A lot of plays didn't go his way when I went back and looked at it. And, yeah, you know, they had some plays where they blocked him up and did things to him, and but they just didn't mess with him. They knew they had the advantage in other places, and they went to other places. They went at Jobo's side a lot, and then at times, Jobo wasn't even in the game. So, you know, they Georgia respected Hutchinson and – and during the game, watching it live, I was thinking, like, Hutchinson ain't doing nothing. Why they ain't calling his name? Why he ain't making plays? But when you go back and look at it, Georgia wasn't, wasn't really messing with that man like that. All right, on this play right here, we always talk about hand placement. Playing with your hands as a defensive lineman or defensive end or whatever you are, playing with your hands versus old lineman. The guy with the better hands, better leverage, better hand placement, Norman is going to win. This is early versus Penn State. 
This is what I want you to see. See, he was able to put his hands on the wrist of the O-lineman. There and there. So as a defensive lineman or defensive end or wherever you are, if you get your hands in that spot and it's rare that you can catch it like this every time, you can kind of drive him wherever you want him to go. You can kind of make him do what you want to do if you get them hands in the right spot. And see, he easily gets rid of them once he realizes what's going on. Because all 53 can do now is just kind of play with his feet, which 53 does a decent job playing with his feet. But when he takes them wrists out the way, your body got to go with it. Your body got to go with it. He kind of stumbled through there. But just, just notice, just keep in mind, his hands in the right spot against this dude for a, later, a clip later on in this highlight. Hands, when you when you can drive them wrists, you can drive the bus. When you get them wrists in the right spot, you can drive the bus as an edge guy or defensive tackle or whatever we want to call the guys on the line of scrimmage with the defensive line. Ends, tackles, threes, ones, fives, sevens, whatever. All right, remember we talked about how athletic he is. He's able to beat blocks without even really giving them a, a move. It's just with his feet, almost like a receiver beating a corner, almost. Look at that, just a straight whiff. He did nothing with his hands. He played with good feet. Gave him a little, eh, eh, like a receiver, you know, trying to get off a release. Uh-uh. Just one little jab, got him off balance, and closed and made the tackle. Or the sack, rather. The sack attempt. They got intentional grounding on that, so same difference as a sack. He just don't get credit for a sack. And he really, he didn't ha he didn't do any kind of move with his hands. He just, he gave him one little stab to the outside. 53 lunged. He had a sack. Clean sack. He just lunged and he, he cut back across his face. Now, what I will say is, the way this is set up, even though Dax Hill is out here beside him, Dax Hill is not a C-gap defender. So why he go inside, I'm not sure. Unless Dax Hill is the, is the C-gap defender. But the way Dax gets up out of that makes me think Hutchins is the C-gap defender, which may hurt him later on. It was a good pass rush move, though. Very athletic. Again, can, can beat guys with speed. Didn't have to use any kind of move. He just beat him with speed, which uh, eventually get that guy thinking, okay, I got to sit quicker. I got to make sure I'm good on my feet, and then he can come do with his other moves. All right, on this one, I got, for my notes, stay outside. Again, we just talked about being a C-gap defender. So, you know, in this look, 41 could potentially look like the C-gap defender. But now, the, the thing is, and they're empty, so... 41's eyes gonna come off him quick, but they ain't empty. So like the 41's eyes off him right right now. So if you get in that fair and you play a guy like a Lamar or a Kyler Murray or a Russell Wilson or Josh Allen or any of these cats that can move, you got to keep your gap. Because he him taking that that inside rush. Now you got two guys in this same gap. You, all you gonna get is a peel out. If he see it by Russell Wilson, by Lamar, by Joe Burrow, by any of those guys, you got to keep the contain and, and trust these guys to push the middle. Because now you spend in, you spend spent what's you know, whatever the proper word is right there. Somebody put in the comment section inside, and now you got two guys right there, and so you got this gap maybe opening up for him to run, and you got you know out this way out the gate if he want to you know if he see it coming inside he got there. So keep the pass rush, find a way to win outside. And trust these guys to push up the middle. Don't do too much. Which he ended up getting washed down. See, he out the door. I ain't. I forgot about that. He out the door. See there? I forgot that part was on there. Because he went inside and just got washed down. This guy that's probably just as fast as me. Was able to get a significant amount of yards. Now, you, you don't have a lot of, of tape uh, against him playing the run. This is a great example of him playing the C-gap and folding back in and making a tackle. Most slow mode is. So, he has C-gap and he's coming off and they're running outside zone. So, now, the edge is done. There's, you know, they might be running inside zone. But if they, the edge is sealed, the, look at that's that's cut off. Like, if somebody tries to go, 
out here they got a bubble all the way around that, and that's an eight, nine, ten yard loss, and they're trying to outrun somebody. So he's he set the edge already on on the right tackle. And actually, Penn State got this blocked up pretty good because when you run inside zone, all you can ask for is a hat on a hat. That's that's not bad inside zone for Penn State. That's a hat on a hat. Now, so now you see the the opening starting to look right there because of so much push Hutchinson got. And watch what he does to the to the tackle. He just gonna cross his face. Look at that. That perfect. And it's probably muscle memory. Watch this left arm by Hutchinson. Watch it come over. It's right on top of it. Now he just pushed out the way. So he can't impede him getting back in there. It's a great freaking play. And that's the new one, so playing the position. Instead of just trying to get off and, and allowing this left hand to stay there and maybe wash you down and let the back cut off. He used his left arm to get his other guy's left arm off of him. I know that was a lot of left arms just then. To fall in and be able to make the play. You know what I'm saying? I was just, when I was, I was hating for no reason. This dude good. I was hating for no reason. I got to come up off that sometimes. All right, we got him right here on this play. Against the right tackle again. And you see, uh. A Jobu in there too on this one. I don't know how many more he was in. I was paying attention to Hutchinson. Coming off this edge. Going to hunt. Going to hunt. The tackle does a, does a good job of getting, you know, he's the tackle's on his second kick before Hutchinson really gets going. Look, look where his hand look I told you. Keep in mind. Hutchinson has both wrists now. He had one earlier. He got both wrists now. Watch him drive him out the way and just get rid of him. Pull him down and went right by him. Luckily, 10, you know, kind of chipped in. 10 kind of chipped in. But that don't stop him. He goes right through the little chip of the raggedy chip of 10 and gets partial sack on this. Him being able to get his hands on 79's wrist, that is invaluable. Because that don't happen a lot. But when you can get him there and drive, you can kind of do what you want with the uh, offensive lineman. Alright, one thing we haven't mentioned yet, and which we probably don't have to mention much about Hutchinson, is his motor. Is his motor. Let's watch this in, in full speed, and then we'll come back and you know slow it down. Still got in there. Now let's talk about what happened. All right, initial coming off the edge versus the left tackle. Tries a little chop to chop both arms down. That kind of misses. Seventy one gets his hand inside and does a good job of moving his feet. Seventy one's fairly athletic, so that move didn't work. All right. Great job by 71 of using his feet and that strong hand and that post hand. So that didn't work. So now he's spin off of him. Okay. That didn't work. Okay. Most most guys would have been like, all right, well, we'll reset this. We'll get on the next try. He's still going. And gets in there and gets on the, get on the sack. Move one didn't work. Move two didn't work. Come to move three. Now, and part of this... The DB probably locking these people up. But still, him getting after 51 and, and not quitting on the play to get in on part of that sack. High motor dudes. and High motor guys, you can't coach them. I mean, you can't you can't coach a high motor. You just got to have it. You got to have it. You don't, you don't coach. There, I don't know of any drills or any schemes to put a motor in, 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 in there. You got either guys or you don't. And that don't mean all people that don't have high motors are not good players. But you can have some sorry people that with a high motor. And I've seen that a lot. Because they know that's all they got. You can have some sorry people with a high motor. He not sorry though. Uh, let's take a look at this. And nothing really happens on this. I just want to show you the end result. So you see 51 and 77 kind of got their eyes on Hutchins. Sliding for him. Make sure you know they kind of do what they need to do to block him. So now they're fully committed to him. Now. Now you got the back coming. 
So look at that. You got six. You got 57. You got 77. All to block one dude. He need to be winning this one-on-one. -on -one. And you got another guy over here on a, a Jobu. So they dropping eight. They dropping eight. But he needs to win this one-on-one. -on -one. You got three guys on on um, Hutchinson. You got two guys on Jobu. You got this guy in the middle. That's one, two, three. That's six blocking three. So basically you got seven. Seven right here. And you're running four guys down the field versus eight. Because of this dude and a little bit because of a Joe Boo. But you got three guys blocking this dude. That's that's the ultimate respect right there. And they completed it. This is one of the Washington's bigger plays of the game. But still, look at the attention that, that he draw just on that one play. All right. You know, so far you've seen what he's done with right tackles. And left tackles. He's kind of, you know, he's dominated. You know, and the only thing that really neutralized him for the most part was UGA. But left tackles and right tackles, he's pretty much dominated. Why would you put a tight end over there one-on-one -on -one with him? Watch this. This is a tight end. Eight seven is a tight end. So he takes the tight end. To the quarterback and gets the I don't know if it's a sack or a QB. I know it's a definite quarterback knockdown. Uh, the tight end does a good job of not just letting him straight up beat him. Because tight end got decent feet. But he takes he takes that. He finally gets him on a leverage and a good leverage position right there with that right arm. He just gonna drive him straight to the QB. So technically. The tight end and Hutchinson hits the QB. Hey, look at that. <laughs> he decleated that man. This man is off the ground. Ooh. Blame your tight end, man. And blame your coach for, for putting that tight end in that position. Ugly. All right, that last clip. We talked about, you know, him, um, what he did to the tight end. And what he do to tackles, right and left. Somebody's brilliant idea to block this man with a fullback. And so, on my notes, on this piece of paper, all it says beside this time stamp is, is law. Watch. <laughs> you see the full package. You, the full package is on display this, this play right here. The full package. Full package. Closing the gap just in case because he gets down blocks. Get the, get the uh, fullback coming and realizes his play pass. So now him, once he realizes it's a pass, he don't have to control his gap no more. Once he realizes it's a pass, he don't, he don't have to control that gap no more. Now he got one-on-one -on -one pass rush with this dude, which is a fullback. He realized that. This simple arm swipe. Grab the, the the tricep or the fullback, throw him by. Or maybe the wrist, I can't really tell. Get the arm over so he can't get him at the last minute. Watch the arm come over. Swipe that down. Clean sail into the QB. Nothing like, I don't know how they do it in some communities. But in our community, when um you get ready to fight, they call it ain't nothing between you but air and opportunity. And that's all it is right there. Ain't nothing between them but air and opportunity. Quarterback realizes it and does a good job of pocket presence. Dips that that's a great job of pocket presence. And and trying to slide out. But again, he is relentless. He has a motor. He sees him trying to get away and stays in there and gets the full sack. No half a sack. This is the full sack. He created the pressure and got the sack. And two separate parts of the play. Created the pressure and got the sack. And two separate parts of the play. And again, I'm going to um, say this. I was hating on the man. Especially during the, in the college playoff game when he really didn't have much going versus um, UGA. Hudson, I was hating on you. You are a certified dog. And if you go number one, I do understand why. I do understand why. This is... This this dude could be in the lines of a what? 
Could be in the lines of a Watt. Not saying he's going to be, but he could be in the lines of a Watt. That's how well put together a prospect he is. The only question I have is, it has he peaked already? Has he peaked already? TJ, TJ peaked as an NFL player. Has Hutchinson peaked at Michigan? That's the only thing I'd be questioned or be worried about. But he is a heck of a prospect. And I don't know whatever he's going to do at the combine, but I can't wait to see his numbers, you know, from the combine. And so um, I think I got Tibbs on the, the docket for this week. So it's going to be hard-pressed to see, you know, if Tibbs is, is better than, than this guy. But right now I can understand why the many say this is – Potentially the number one pick. And I'm seeing a lot of people going back and forth saying between him and Evan Neal. But depending on what the – who has the first pick? I don't even remember right now. Um, the Lions – no, not the Lions. Whoever had the first pick, depending on what they need, I don't think you can go wrong with this kid or Evan Neal. You know, build from, build from the front up. All right. So, again, this is your first time here. Make sure you hit that uh, like button. If you like the content and want to see more, hit the subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified – when these random videos come out, you could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Peace.